Good morning and welcome to worship at Old South Congregational Church, United Church of Christ on this crisp first Sunday of November. Welcome to all of you, whether you're here in person in the sanctuary or you're on Zoom or you're watching this days or weeks uh, after this day on, and you're watching this on YouTube, welcome. I'm glad that you're here, glad that we can gather together as God's people. Glad that we can be in this place where we can be drawn closer to each other and to our God who loves us. So welcome. I'm glad that you're here. We'll begin as we normally do with a prelude. So I'll turn it over to Brad. And as you can tell, we have our call to worship all ready to go, and I'll turn things over to Christine. Welcome to all, as we gather together as God's holy people, seeking renewal, strength, and courage for the journey. Welcome, siblings in faith, as we gather as church. Welcome, as we bring all of ourselves that we may be blessed this day, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let us pray. Ever living God, instill in us the trust and self-giving that your word imparts to us. Teach us again during this time together that you are always with us. Remind us that all that we have is a gift from you and is meant to be shared. Help us to feel and to know the Holy Spirit speaking to us and empowering us to be the people you call us to be. We lift up this prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ, 
who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you very much to the choir and to Brad for that recording special for today. I'd like to invite Deb Morgan, our first volunteer, to offer a stewardship message. Good morning. After I signed up for the stewardship message, I thought, what did I get myself into? This is really out of my comfort zone. But so here we go. Let me start by giving you a little background. Old South has always been a part of my life. I remember going to Sunday school down in the basement and then over to the parish house as I got older. I was part of the junior choir and when you got into high school, you could even join the senior choir. And that was a really big thing. I taught Sunday school for a number of years, <laughs> the younger kids, and then a group from Gardner of adults with special needs. I think I learned more from them than they did for me. I have served on the CE, standing and diaconic committees. That's what they were called then. I'm really telling my age now. So as you can see, Old South means a lot to me. I support it financially and give it my time when I can because I love this church. 
I enjoy worshiping with all of you on Sunday mornings, whether you're here in person or joining us on Zoom. We support each other in good times and bad. We are all so blessed to be part of a church family that cares about each other. Thank you, Deb, very much. So we have been moving our way most of the fall to take a little detour last week. We've been going through um, some of the big stories from the Hebrew scriptures. And we've been focused um, in various ways on essentially call stories. And today um, is another call story. But as we've been moving through, we've noticed, I hope, You've noticed the call stories are all very different. And today's is also it's a different kind of call story. So listen in on how you engage with this call story. This will be a call story that probably most of you are not familiar with at all. This may be the very first time that you've heard this call story. So listen in for how this call story resonates with you. And then I'll say a little bit more, and then I have a story to share today. So I am in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 18. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, so may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went on a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree he asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. He looked and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones in a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, get up and eat. Otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the, then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the, of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks and pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, go. Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Yehu, son of Nimshi, 
as king over Israel, and you shall anoint Elisha, son of Zapha, of Emoloah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Haziel, Yehu shall kill, and whoever escapes from the sword of Yehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Here ends our reading from scripture. May God bless us with understanding. Amen. How do we hear, perceive God's voice? How do we feel and know God's presence? Today in the passage, we have the sense that God's voice is in the midst of sheer silence. What does that sound like, feel like to you? How do you feel and perceive God's voice in the midst of silence and quiet? I'm going to share a story that I hope will get that sense flowing a little bit more, perhaps make you or sort of lead you to think in, in ways that you haven't thought of before about how you perceive God's voice in the midst of silence and quiet. So I have a story to share, and if you guys want to get a little closer you can, so you can see the pictures better, you're welcome to, to move this way a little bit, because the book is not very large, as you can see. You want to come over here, Elizabeth? No, that's close enough for now? That's good. All right, so this is a book called The Quiet Book. There are many kinds of quiet. First one awake, quiet. Jelly side down, quiet. Don't scare the robin, quiet. Others telling secrets. Quiet. Coloring in the lines. Quiet. Thinking of a good reason you were drawing on the wall. Quiet. <laughs> Hide and seek. Quiet. Last one to get picked up from school, quiet. Swimming underwater, quiet. Pretending you're invisible, quiet. Lollipop. Quiet. First look at your new hairstyle, quiet. <laughs> Sleeping sister, quiet. Right before you yell surprise, Quiet. Making a wish. Quiet. Top of the roller coaster. Quiet. Best friends don't need to talk. Quiet. Surprise visit from Aunt Tilly, quiet.
Do iguanas bite? Quiet. Before the concert starts, quiet. Trying not to hiccup, quiet. This one I know well, because I hiccup a lot. First snowfall, quiet. Something we're gonna know soon enough. Car ride at night, quiet. Too many bubbles, quiet. Story time, quiet. Like now. Tucking in Teddy, quiet. Bedtime kiss, quiet. Wet flashlight, quiet. Sound asleep, quiet. This moment, quiet. This moment, quiet. This moment, quiet. This moment. Take a moment, look around you, appreciate this congregation. Quiet. Knowing that you are among friends and companions on the journey. Quiet. May God continue to bless us with noise, with companionship, and with the full sense of God's presence in quiet. Amen. Seems a little sad to interrupt the quiet the good and the meaningful quiet. But we also perceive God's presence in other ways, like singing a hymn together. And so we will sing, I sing a song of the saints of God. It is in the Pilgrim Hymnal. We'll, use, we'll sing that version today, 481. The words are also on the bulletin sheet.
seated. We come now to our mission moment, so I'll turn it over to Christine. Before God kindly spoke to Elijah in the silence to tell him what was expected of him, he fed him and gave him water to drink. For God knew it's hard to hear and pay attention to understand when one is hungry and thirsty. This month, recognizing that truth, we are focusing our thoughts and our gifts toward addressing the widespread hunger and food insecurity throughout our community, our state, our nation, and the world. Too many people, too many children, go hungry every day, even as food in some places is plentiful and even goes to waste, is thrown away. How can we make a difference? We can share our gifts of food with others here in our own neighborhoods and community, as we do with our gifts of meals to the Bread of Life Shelter. We can support programs and policies that attempt to decrease the hunger around us. One of the ones we'll focus on this month is the Bread, of, bread for the World, also the Good Shepherd Food Bank in our own state and community. And we can support with our gifts through our outreach fund. So please be generous this month as you think of the ways in which we can help to change the world for those who go hungry and thirst. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. During our time of offering, we have an opportunity to reflect a bit on how we give, how we participate in the life of this church, in the life of this community of faith. What are the gifts and the talents that we freely give? Are there things that we're feeling in the silence, perhaps new ways we are being called, asked to give of ourselves? Our offering time is an opportunity to reflect and to be open to God's spirit and God's presence in our midst. How are you giving and participating in the life of the church? And what is God calling to you next? We also take a moment to think about our financial gifts and offerings to the church, uh, to the life of this church. We do have expenses. And so we do ask that you participate and give what you can. So we'll take, an we'll take a moment where you may bring your gifts and offerings forward. Um, and just a reminder to those who are not here, well, first of all, a reminder to those who are in the sanctuary, um, we are asking uh, during this COVID time that you come forward. There is an offering plate that's right over here, right in front of Elizabeth. And there is an offering plate on this side, just trying to minimize how many cords you have to walk over. Uh, so you can find one of those. If you wish to give to outreach, just make sure that it says outreach or there are, if, if you're here in person, there are some envelopes in the entryways and you can put your offering in an outreach envelope. If you are at home, we encourage you to give by either mailing in your offerings or dropping them off um, or sending them directly to Wendy at her home, or you can use a credit card and there's a link on our webpage that will help you do that. Those are collected by the main conference and then sent to us. Um, so there are lots of ways through which you may give and participate in the financial health and well being of this church. And we are grateful, so grateful that we are in the midst of such a generous community.
Thank you, Brad. And then now it is time to gather around the table. And this month, we'll also be including uh, remembering during the course of um, communion this, this month. There are a couple of uh, verses um, that we'll sing or during the course of communion. Uh, you'll find them printed on the um, page, on the, um, on the, on the bulletin page. Um, they're also, they were in the email yesterday. If you do not have that, you would like to know um, which hymn, or you'd like to follow along the hymn tune. It is in the New Century Hymnal, number 336. We will sing the first verse uh, near the beginning, and then we'll be singing the final verse a little bit later. So you can have that ready to go. Let me invite you to the table with these words. The invitation is simple. Come and eat of the feast. Not a meal to nourish the body, but to feed the soul. We receive the bread and cup connected to the ages, to the saint of old who felt unworthy, to the seeker eager to know God, to the young person who wonders what it's all about, to the child who eats with unburdened faith. Woven into eat this time the hopes and tears of generations. There is great joy here. No one is turned away, for God is the host. Let us sing verse one of here, oh my God, I see you face to face. be in the spirit of prayer. God is in this place and in our hearts. May we open ourselves to the nudging God that we feel the breath of the spirit remembering God made flesh. And Jesus who taught us a new way, let us now observe some silence. Tender, transforming God, you have invited us to gather at this table, to taste the feast, the same abundant promises offered to our ancestors in faith. Time and time again, you've offered your grace, even as we have stepped away. You continue to call us to be your people. You have never left us. We praise you for second, third, and fourth chances. You are ever patient, always faithful. You give thanks for this. We give thanks for this time of celebration, for the one this meal remembers, for the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. With those who have gone before us, whose hands touched the bread, whose lips embraced the cup, we worship you. We glorify you. We remember those who have died in the past year or so. We celebrate their lives even as we continue to grieve. We remember Daniel Parmelo, Richard LaFontaine, Jane Rudishon, Warren Tommy Hayes, Alice Ketty, Dottie Knott, Myron Kruger, Pat Larson, 
Liz Dennison. Charlie Van Achi. Shirley McIntosh. Louise Perkins. Connie Best. Pat Tarr. And Nancy Longfellow. And remember all those who have gone before us. This is the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Now let us sing verse five of here, O my Lord, I see you face to face. Gathered with his friends, Jesus took bread, broke it, and said, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. And pouring the wine, this is my blood, spilled out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. God of all, send your spirit to this place, so that those gathered here here in the sanctuary or at home, in this sacred moment, may know your presence. As we eat the bread and drink of the cup, make us one with the saints and with our siblings in faith around the world. Be with us, God, not only here, but in every moment of our lives. Help us to know you, to be guided by the Holy Spirit, and to live, and to live as Christ did. Now and forever. Amen. This is the feast prepared for you. Come and share for all are ready. Deb will help me in... Um, bringing the elements around again as we've been doing we'll just ask that you take the element as it is brought around we will not uh, save the cup until everyone has been served but to take the elements as they are passed around and then we'll take this side of the sanctuary and i will serve this side of the sanctuary and brad will play as we bring the elements around
Let us pray. Creative, connecting God, you have sent your spirit and made us the body of Christ. From childlike faith to youthful energy, from middle-aged mindfulness to elders' wisdom, we thank you for this time, this time of remembrance, this time of connecting with you. Amen. We come to the end of our worship service this Sunday. I hope that in the days ahead, that you will pause when you experience some silence and listen in, listen in to what is there, for what you might hear, and know that it may be something unexpected. May each of us be blessed with a sense something new in a moment of sheer silence. May you hear this blessing, take in this blessing. May it be a blessing. To you, O oh God, we ask that you increase our faith, help us to love, encourage us to act in the boldness of our faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.